Okay, so I just had a uh, longish chat with a young uh, girl who turned out to actually be a Unitarian Universalist. Um, not a member of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, um, but uh, from the sound of it, she, she wasn't even a member of a congregation. Um, but she said that she worked at a Unitarian Universalist uh, summer camp. Um, and, and she, you know, she identified as a Unitarian Universalist. Uh, and so we had a very good conversation. You know, she engaged in a free and responsible search for the uh, truth and meaning of uh, what I'm doing here. And uh, unfortunately, because I had the, you know, video started off with the police interaction, and it ran out before the uh, conversation could be completely recorded. That's her over there, I think. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. I, I <laughs> Bye, see you later. <clears throat> so that was the girl, yeah. The, so the kid yelling, Hail Satan, was uh, one of her friends. Um, and she uh, shushed him. Good morning. Or maybe it's even this afternoon now. Um, so anyway, very good conversation. Went over to everything with her and... You know, she agreed, you know, that's not Unitarian, that's not right, those, that's against principles, and so on and so forth. Which happens a lot with, with people, you know, even Unitarians who are, are not uh, directly involved with this, when you just calmly and rationally explain everything to them. Um, so that was very nice. Unfortunately, it would have been nice to have uh, the whole thing uh, from start to finish recorded, um, but we don't. She was actually glancing nervously at the camera um, during our conversation. I think, you know, she's probably under 20, so she's very hip digitally, no doubt. So she probably understood that, that my camera could actually be running in video mode and recording uh, what was being said. Uh, and yes, we did probably get the beginning of that and even a, a reasonable chunk of it, but we didn't get the whole thing. Um, so, again, that's unfortunate. Would have been nice to have the whole thing, but uh, yeah. so, so they're going to have me for the fair. <laughs> so this uh, woman was sort of looking, uh, giving sidelong glances at my uh, picket sign. So I've actually been here uh, longer than expected. I intended to wrap up at uh, 11, uh, even a little earlier, I guess. What time is it now? It is 11.22. And they will start coming out in about uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Um, well, maybe half an hour. Uh, so I might as well just stick around. Um, or I suppose I could go get some breakfast and come back. Uh, I had a light breakfast uh, before coming here, but uh, haven't had anything really substantial. Just a bowl of cereal and a cup of coffee. But anyway, <clears throat> we're off to a very, very good start to... Uh, this uh, continuation of my uh, alternative spiritual practice of protesting against uh, Unitarian Universalist uh, injustices, abuses, and hypocrisy, um, and had a very, very good interaction with the police, which I'm very happy about. They heard my side of the story, they heard the church leadership side of the story, and they respected my rights. There wasn't the slightest threat of a ticket or anything from these police officers. They even said, you understand your rights. So that's good. Uh, that's how it should go. That's, that's, uh, if, if, if all of the police interactions had been like that one that we had today, I wouldn't have a beef with the police. Unfortunately, because of very stupid behavior by some police officers, abuse of power, you know, overstepping their authority and so on, you know, I've probably had some bad interactions that number in the, uh, you know, that's probably heading towards a dozen or more over the years. Um, uh, but when you consider that the police have intervened uh, many dozens of times, you know, if not some hundreds of times, it's, it's not too bad. But, but on the other hand, I've, I've been thinking about it, and it, it's unfortunately... Uh, a fairly high percentage of the police think it's their job to shut down my protest. It's too many. It shouldn't be any. Um, you know, I could live with a, a small minority, you know, overdoing it. Uh, but, you know, having done an assessment of everything, um, there's too high a percentage 
of police officers who, who do not respect my uh, constitutionally guaranteed uh, right to engage in the peaceful public protest. You know, other police officers in the past have given me a ticket for this, for this chalk on the sidewalk. Um, this should be perfectly acceptable within a, uh, a protest. You know, it's chalk, it's not permanent, uh, it can easily be washed away with a garden hose after I've gone, the rain will wash it away, um, and so on. Uh, many, many larger protests have people chalking slogans and, and they're never ticketed. But because I'm alone, <clears throat> uh, you know, basically, it's happened once. But, but because I refuse to pay that $100 ticket, it's probably up around 1000 now. Uh, and my uh, license has been suspended because I refuse to pay it. I was ready to go to jail for a weekend, um, if it came to it. Uh, but they changed the law so that uh, they don't jail you anymore uh, for, for not paying fines. They, they suspend your driver's license if you have one. I don't know what they do if you don't have a driver's license. But in my case, my driver's license was suspended because I had failed to pay tickets, or indeed refused to pay tickets, that had absolutely nothing to do with driving. Um, so, uh, that's that. <clears throat> and, uh, we shall, uh, okay, so they are going in there. Having a good look at the signs. So, we're getting a little worn here, but uh, a little hidden by shadow, but still, you know, they're very visible. Justice for you, you clergy abuse victims, now, um, or at least within the next year or so, shall we say. <clears throat> UUA leaders uh, pervert justice. Well, uh, they certainly do. And then the most recent insane uh, perversion of justice that UUA leaders have engaged in is uh, falsely accusing me of the uh, archaic crime of blasphemous libel, which has not been prosecuted in Canada since 1936. And their basis for this blasphemous libel accusation against me is they are alleging that I've made uh, unfounded and vicious allegations to the effect that ministers of the association engage in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. And they're saying that this is defamatory to the extent that it you know, amounts to the crime of blasphemous libel. Uh, well, there's a problem there. Two problems. Two major problems. Uh, one is that that key word in there, unfounded, is itself unfounded. Um, the few allegations that I've actually made about Unitarian Universalist clergy uh, engaging in the despicable crime known as rape um, are, are true. They're, they're not unfounded at all, and, and they're not particularly vicious. I mean, if anything was vicious, it was the rapes. Um, you know, my blog posts about it are, are comparatively restrained. Uh, they're not sensationalistic. Um, so uh, I got some passers-by here. Um, so what I'm getting at is, is they're wrong in accusing me of making unfounded and vicious allegations. Uh, my allegations about Unitarian Universalists who did in fact engage in rape and pedophilia are true and they're based on credible news reports in American newspapers. Uh, one case is very well known. It was even uh, spoken about on the Oprah Winfrey show, uh, Unitarian Universalist uh, minister, Reverend Mac Mitchell, lured uh, teenage Tibetan refugees uh, to his parish in uh, the Boston area from uh, their family in India on the promise of a better life in America. And he proceeded to systematically and repeatedly rape them. In some cases, uh, they were tied to the bed and so on. And uh, you know, some of the details of what happened are not very pleasant, and we won't talk about them right now. But, but you know, this was, there was absolutely no question that Reverend Mac Mitchell, you know, committed rape and was charged with rape, was charged, uh, was tried for rape, was found guilty of rape, and he went to jail for rape. So, sorry UUA, but that allegation is not unfounded. Um, and then the other one. Um, I spoke about a member of the uh, First Parish Norwell, um, a Richard Buell, who was convicted of raping preteen girls at a time when he was in his 50s. Um, and he too was convicted. Now, he wasn't even a minister. This is the funny thing is, is the one Unitarian Universalist who I, I entirely justifiably described as a pedophile rapist wasn't even a minister. 
which does not mean to say that a certain number of Unitarian Universalist ministers have not been found guilty of rape, I mean of pedophilia. Some have. Um, and some UU Sunday school teachers have been found guilty of pedophilia uh, and rape. Um, but the point being is that, that the, the UUA falsely accused me of uh, the crime of bas blasphemous libel on the unfounded basis that I had made unfounded uh, allegations about rape. No, my allegations were 100% true and supported by abundant public record evidence. Uh, but the interesting thing, and we're going to wrap this up very soon, the interesting thing is that, uh, yes, and that is legal bullying, which does in fact suck. Um, the interesting thing is that uh, even if I'd been doing what they claimed, even if I'd actually made unfounded and vicious allegations to the effect that ministers of the Unitarian Universal Association engage in such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape, even if my allegations were false and libelous in the normal sense of the term, you know, um, a false allegation in writing that's of a defamatory nature, even if this was true, which is not the case, it would not amount to blasphemous libel. Blasphemous libel is basically attacking the most deeply held uh, religious beliefs of a religion. And actually, it's even questionable in terms of the Canadian law if it applies to any religion other than Christianity. Uh, in England, uh, where this law originated in terms of the Canadian Criminal Code, uh, the common law, um, and the British Criminal Code, uh, blasphemous libel applies only to the uh, Church of England, the Anglican Church. In other words, if you're deeply insulting Roman Catholics or Jews or Muslims or whatever, it's not blasphemous libel according to the British law, which was repealed in 2008. Uh, the Canadian law is a bit more vague, uh, but nonetheless, um, simply put, uh, even if I was doing what they claim, it would not really be blasphemous libel. So it was just insane for the UUA to accuse me of blasphemous libel uh, for any reason whatsoever, but, but, but certainly for a reason that that's just doesn't amount to uh, blasphemous libel, even if I was actually doing that. I'm noticing the time is coming up to uh, 13 minutes, 12.30 seconds here. So I think we shall uh, wrap this up in an unlucky uh, 13 minutes or so. Uh, and uh, call it uh, a 13 minute clip. So we got 15 seconds to go. Um, so, that's it. It is uh, Sunday, September 8th, uh, and uh, 2013. It's a Water Communion Sunday, and it is also incoming Sunday, you know, the first uh, service of the church year in which uh, the minister, uh, Reverend Diane Rollert, uh, presides over. Um, and we're past the 13-minute mark, so we are now closing up and finishing this uh, video about the uh, less than lucky Unitarian Universalist uh, Church. Uh, not only the uh, Unitarian Church of Montreal, but the UUA down in Boston. Very, very unlucky because they made their own bad luck. And on that note, 1333, we're done.